All right. Now, we're going to hit it all. Liz Peek, columnist for The Hill and Fox News and uh, contributors, and Steve Moore, Committee to Unleash Prosperity and Freedom Works. Liz, I begin with you. I want to get to the inflation, and I want to get to the Laffer curve, and I want to get to um, uh, dynamic scoring. But what did you think about what Molly Hemingway was talking about? Liz? Oh, Larry, I am, I am so glad that we have had this more information about these tech titans and their impact on the, on the election. We all knew that they suppressed information. That is a big story in and of itself, whether it was Hunter Biden's laptop or other things that they could have brought out about Joe Biden. Uh, we knew tech had come down on the side of Joe Biden, but this really makes it very, very clear that these tech mobile, moguls really want to use their hundreds of billions of dollars, in some cases trillions of dollars, to really sway elections. I think the American people are not going to like this. Uh, I think having these incredibly rich people take over our elections and uh, influence the outcomes in this way is really abhorrent. So I don't know how this is going to change. Uh, you know, Congress hears these uh, tech guys come in and talk about how they're bipartisan and they're not uh, biased, and some people actually stand up for that. I think it's ludicrous, and mm. this really proves the point. I hope we see some action from Congress, if not this Congress, the next one, which I believe will be Republican-led, have got to w rein in the power of these enormously powerful companies. Well, hope springs eternal. I like that thought. I mean, Steve Moore, <laughs> yes. it's, you know, Molly Hemingway is bringing this out. It's not so much that there was fraud on Election Day, although there was some, to be sure. But what she's saying, and her colleagues are saying, is that the election was bought way before Election Day. And that, I think, is the staggering bombshell. Well, Larry, first of all, I would say that uh, I don't believe the election was, quote, stolen. But I do believe that if we had had a traditional election where people voted on Election Day, as they've had throughout American history, there's very little doubt in my mind that Donald Trump would be president today. Mm -hmm. uh, as my good friend John Fund would say, they stole it fair and square. They changed the voting rules uh, in the middle of the game. I want to make a point about uh, about uh, Zuckerberg and these these uh, technology giants. First of all, uh, it is interesting to me that for as long as I've been in Washington, for 35 years, all I heard from Democrats was, we've got to take big money out of politics, right? Yeah. We've got to take get big money. <laughs> I didn't hear a peep out of that in this election because they got so many hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars from these people. The third point I want to make, Larry, is why? Why, why is Zuckerberg and why are these people like Bloomberg and others giving hundreds of millions of dollars to promote a left-wing mm. anti-free market capitalism yep. agenda. It doesn't make any sense. Right, I mean, you talk, about the you talk about the tax cuts, you talk about the deregulations, you talk about the way Donald Trump revived the American economy. Why are they against that? I mean, he, you know, Trump's policies grew these companies enormously. Mm. I, I'm, utterly, just, I'm just utterly okay. stupid. Utterly, utterly <laughs> stupid. All right. Let's get back to work. Feet on the ground. Liz Peak, <laughs> transitory inflation, permanent inflation. Oh, I, I think we're seeing signs that it's more than transitory, Larry. It, maybe it won't go on forever, but this is, we're, we're seeing the beginnings of a serious wage price spiral, which means that it's getting embedded in everybody's pricing, has become embedded also in consumer expectations for inflation, which can continue to go up. So I think we're not looking at any a uh, quick fix here, even if we get the bottlenecks resolved, which undoubtedly will happen over the next year, year and a half. Some of them are pretty serious, so it may not be immediate. My guess is that prices are going to continue to go up because all companies are experiencing uh, difficulties and they're all talking about raising prices. That doesn't end overnight. You know, Steve, if these prices continue to rise after the port of Los Angeles and that uh, crisis is fixed, as it will be fixed. If those prices keep rising, as Liz suggested, there has to be an excess monetary position in the background. The Federal Reserve is culpable. They have been an accomplice to all this easy money government spending. Well, there's little doubt about that. And I want to make one point, because this is kind of hot off the presses. You've got now the Biden administration, the economists over there, 
basically saying, well, inflation isn't necessarily such a bad thing. It only affects rich people. And what a stupid thing to say. I mean, people who get clobbered by inflation are the lowest income people, the people who make thirty or forty thousand dollars a year who now pay, you know, fifteen or twenty dollars more to fill their tank, or you know, their hundred dollars they spend a week on groceries now costs 125 or 30, 130 dollars. This is the unfairest tax of all. If you care about income inequality and you care about the poor, the worst thing you can do is have an inflationary monetary policy. And this gets to your point about kill the bill. If you're worried about inflation, the stupidest thing we could do right now is spend and tax and borrow $3 trillion more money. Three, five. Liz Peek, I'm still calling it, I'm a diehard, I'm still calling it the Trump tax cut economy. They haven't repealed yeah. it yet. You know, we're still operating with a 21% corporate tax and a 20% deduction on business taxes and a low stable capital gains tax. Liz, I think it's helped propel the economy. And it has paid for itself, as we argued in the administration. Dynamic scoring worked. What do you think? <laughs> well, I think that's right. I think what we had was an incredibly sharp, sudden downturn, government-induced shutdown of our economy. And it bounced back very quickly, Larry, in part because the economy was so healthy, was so strong, partly because of those tax cuts. So I, I think, honestly, you can go back uh, a year and a half, two years, and everything that's been done to correct the downturn uh, in the last year, at least, has been wrong. We didn't need a big blowing up on the demand side. Consumers had two and a half trillion dollars in excess savings. Uh, we had, you know, a very quick rebound in growth. The first quarter when Biden came in grew at six percent. So we didn't need all the spending in the one point nine trillion dollar uh, American Rescue Plan, and we sure don't All need. Right. I totally agree with you. I this get continued up. bond buying. Thanks, I don't even kids. know what the rationale Liz for that Peek, is. Steve Moore, Powell I'm really Cutlow. hasn't come up with one. Gotta so jump. all of those things are wrong. But the worst thing is Biden <laughs> created a labor shortage. Which